For some football and some criminal rehabilitation. This is Eddie Collins. Guys, this is Justin Brown. And we are Medium Popcorn and we are reviewing Gridiron Gang just in time for the Super Bowl, baby. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Even though my, my Lions didn't get in, they came mighty, mighty close. But uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson in a, in a film that's supposed to be very inspirational, but is as formulaic as the day is long. No, wait, hey, a- whoa, 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 Brandon. What? There's nothing formulaic about this movie. It oh, has whoa. exhibit in it. Well, yeah, I mean, first of all, exhibit- <laughs> and you know, he's great at improvising with your cars. <laughs> oh, God. But exhibit has one emotion and it's scowl. That's all he does. It's just until the end when he's making fun of kids. And he's just like, ha, 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 you dumbass bitch. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on? This movie totally is all over the fucking place. And The Rock. The Rock, okay, so they show footage of the real, like, uh, coaches at the end. Yeah, yeah. And how they motivate their, you know, these kids. And I'm like, okay, that makes more sense. Because the way that The Rock is talking to these kids, is like he's he's The Rock. He's reading them their rights and just shutting them down. And yeah. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, bro. No, but you didn't play football in high school. I did not. I rode the crew. Y- yeah. <laughs> See, Somebody, uh, somebody uh, screaming at you with a megaphone to row is a little bit different than a than a. Well, now when you crash in that boat into a bunch of people, because <laughs> that's because <laughs> those boats were bad expensive, bro. And I was fucking up, yo. I was like, they go, they go, big B financially. They, they gonna put you on the big boat. <laughs> I'm never gonna financially recover from this. That would have been my mama if I actually crashed that shit the way I was about to. So I mean. So there are some football coaches which are like the way the rock was in this movie towards mm-hmm. the beginning. Like as he's trying to find his voice as a coach, slapping you know, the shit out of the players with a magazine. And I know. I mean, I mean, he's in the he middle works, of the night. <laughs> he, he works in a juvenile detention center. Yeah, it's yeah. just like I mean, they're lucky. That's all he's doing to them. And, yeah. and I, I don't mean the weird stuff. I mean, but 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 honestly, it's like you know. You know, sometimes, you know, those kids, you know, catch hands. Oh, yeah. I mean, we open with we open with uh, kids fighting each other. Then the rock assaults the kid that instigated the fight. Then we cut to uh, with a rolled up newspaper like he's yeah. a dog who, who soiled the rug. <laughs> and then we cut to a midnight ass whooping at a drive by. Like, and then we, and not even a drive by, but and also a kid gets ran over by a car. Like, yeah, that was we rough. open hot. And that's like the first 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, now, mind you, mind you, this is based off of a true story. Yes. Oh, so like, on top of that, that uh, another kid kills like his uh, abusive stepdad or whoever the hell that nigga mm-hmm. was, and that's how he gets in jail. Yeah, that was so crazy though. Halfway through the movie, was like, "You said there'd be no murderers on the team," and he's like, "I'm trying." He said, "I'm trying to teach them football so they don't murder again." <laughs> I'm. Just- <laughs> There's so crazy lines in this movie, dude. I know it's for a good. I know like the intent is there, the mission of this program was there, but that was a crazy ass line. Dude. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, yes, he's correct. Like, like, yes, like, yes. like it, it's right. It's just like I'm trying to teach him football so they stop murdering each other. <laughs> and it was also like you got your way got you here, and you're here because you lost. You're losers. And I wrote down, God damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but, even- I mean, I mean, you, you, but like Brandon, like. He's not telling them anything wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was just the way that The Rock did it. He just didn't have that smoothness that he has now as an older, wiser man. <laughs> but hold on, Brandon. You're also talking about a guy who's playing a football coach. And this is uh, what? The, I think the 80s, correct? I thought it was the 90s. 
Well, no, the movie came out. Oh uh, no, yeah, yeah this during is, 1990s. This is, yeah, yeah, this is based off a documentary from 1993. All right, mm -hmm. so this is from the 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, I mean, the character he's playing is is from the '90s, so therefore, like, you're talking about a football coach from the '90s, like in the crack era and all the stuff that was going on, and this is supposedly in Los Angeles. So. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely in the West Coast. Yeah, but no, well, the it, gang, it, the gangs, and the cholos and everything like that. That's all West Coast shit. Yeah, well, I mean, it well, it it, it is Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah. People were very rough around the edges around that time, especially football. Football was a was a wild sport. It's still a wild sport, but back then it was even wilder. I mean, for sure. And then also, like Dwayne Johnson, the way he played Coach Sean Porter was just so it was unhinged at times. Like, and <laughs> you know, it was. For instance, there's that one kid that was smiling. Exhibits like he always smiling. The Rock says, I wonder if he smiled when he stabbed the old lady for her purse. I was like, God damn. <laughs> well, I, I mean, but that's the thing is just like you it was fall like, all right, they're kids, but let, let's not let our guard down too much because these are some, yeah. some rough and tumble <laughs> kids. It's yeah. tough. It's, it's like, hey, let's not get too comfortable. That kid stabbed an old lady. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, think it's end, not funny, but it is kind of funny, bro. But then at the end, with the voiceover, it's like, Yeah, this kid, you know, and they show him smiling. He's like, He got shot in Compton. I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah, he like, got killed in the drive by, yeah. And I'm just like, Lord, but let's 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 wind the bet to the beginning, everybody. This mm -hmm. came back, it mm -hmm. came out in 2006, so that means we're, we're seeing the rock with hair again, which yeah. is so bizarre. Um, because he's losing it. There's a certain lineup that he's doing where you can tell he's losing the hair, but he's keeping it as long as he can. Mm -hmm. Um, we got a young Journey Smollett in here who I wrote down. Journey is low-key an underrated baddie. Oh, no, 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 no. She's not underrated. She's a baddie. I See, I think she, when she did the Tyler Perry movie, I think for me, the attractive thing fell off a little bit because she was so strung out and she was like really, really skinny in that movie. For some, like because of the drug use and everything, she just looked crazy. And you know Tyler Perry, he don't he don't do black women well with makeup and lighting yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so she she was looking crazy. But in this, I was like, oh yeah, she was a, she was a baddie. Um, but yeah, this movie, the first fifteen minutes are so fucking wild, You're heroin, like, heroin. <laughs> <she's> like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, they ran this they ran this kid over and threw a fence. Yeah, yeah, that but, was some right. Halloween end shit. <laughs> it was like goddamn. Which, by the way, I mean, that only car, good, movie, only good that, scene in that movie, which is when he killed the bullies, that Corey kid killed those bullies, yeah. the fucking band camp bullies for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a weird... Anyway, I'm going to tell you. You know what's funny, though? Because, like, the kids that were in that car, they very much Michael Myers. Because they, they oh, killed yeah. that one kid in the drive-by. They yeah. said, nah, we ain't done. Turn he around. Chase. <laughs> chase that kid. I mean... That's the kind of chase that even if I survive, I'd be traumatized from that. Like they were, they were like going over like sidewalks and hitting other cars and shit. They wanted to kill those kids. Yeah, they're like we gonna kill you. And then you got Amari Hardwood coming out, hardcore gangster dude. I mean, he's so hardcore, <laughs> y'all. He he stuck onto a he stuck onto a football game and shot one of the players. It's like it was like Jesus Christ, this yeah, movie's bro. too much. Bro, uh, I there was a. When I was in high school, there was a shooting at one of our high school games. Not really? uh, not a, not a game that we were at. Well, I mean, one God of the damn. games in our conference, uh, somebody got yeah. shot at one of the uh, one of the games. Like like you know like all like this is the stuff that happens. Yeah, I mean like not necessarily in my neighborhood, but there's you know a lot of these adjoining neighborhoods is like things like this is like real life. Like this That's... is close, you know, and and for like yeah. inner city, you know, you know with what. Yeah, bro. Like, like, know, like it's real though. I know this movie. This movie was triggering as fuck because, like, you know, my god kids and stuff like that, and the the situation that they're being raised in. It's heavy. It's heavy watching this because you see why kids that are lost they get involved with gangs, and then that becomes their family. That protection. becomes their culture. Exactly. For protection. But then it gets like it gets so out of hand. You know, it, it remind me that it actually watching this movie, especially like taking place in L.A actually made me respect that monologue that John Witherspoon gives on Friday even more. Where he's like, everyone does the gun thing. Fight with, with these. But the, bro, yeah. I know it's like he's a comedic actor, but that's yeah. a real, because it's so easy, like, I mean, it's not easy to pull a trigger and shit, but that's no, such a I bitch, mean, no, it actually such is. a bitch-ass way to like take, like, you know, resolve an issue. No, no, but I mean, but but that's the thing, like, it is an easy 
you know, it is very easy to pull the trigger. Anybody and all these everybody had a gun in this movie, apparently, because when that kid got ran over, his mom is mourning. They got police and ambulances everywhere. Omar just comes up to him like, I got a burner for you. I hands him a gun in front of all the I'm like, what is going on? I mean, but, you know, again, Brandon, this is the crack era in the yes. 1990s. Yeah. Like, yeah, the 80s are obviously uh, were really bad, but like this is still nineties. You know, mm. crack was still was, was still out there. It wasn't whack. It wasn't whack. Yeah, that's. I mean, you had that like, one yeah. kid that you know, you had the the kid who was a quarterback. You know, it was like <laughs> rocks his name was like, yeah, you made like six times my salary selling crack. And he's just so, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That was wild. He's like, so you good at math, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. I can put some numbers together. He's like, I need you to help this one kid with the math. He's like, he's like, I don't know about that. It's like, well, here's the math. You don't help him, they gonna be on your ass. He's yeah. just like, got you. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, that's why I mean by this formulaic. It felt very much like a lot of the similar beats we've seen. It just happened to be like ultra, like violent in times, or yeah. like you know, vulgar. Like it was weird. Like, cause what was this movie rated? Cause I'm there's enough f bombs and shit like that where I'm like, was this rated R? When it came out, actually, I don't know. UV in the chat says PG thirteen. That's interesting because they had more than one f bomb, and I thought that you could only do one f bomb to get a, you know, PG thirteen rating. But this is also the mid two thousands. Yeah, so but you remember still they, a little while. You know, you remember they, they ain't no titties. They ain't no titties. They ain't no like you know gore and you know it's yeah. like the there's violence in this, but not gratuitous violence. Well, it's also black on black violence. So they're like, oh, well, you know, yeah, it's okay. yeah. <laughs> MPAA is like, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, it's a message for the blacks. Oh, yeah. that's how they. This is the only way they'll learn. I mean, the Rock does say football can teach many, uh, many skills <laughs> when yeah. he's pitching to the white men. Listen, there's lessons in football. <laughs> also, um, I want to shout out Kevin Dunn, who was in this. He played like a Ted De Dexter. He was one of like the supervisors of the mm. facility. Um, because in this, this reminded me of him in Beep. I don't know if you ever watched Beat, but he's a great comedic actor. He had some great fucking one-liners on mm. that show, um, which then became less funny because it became reality. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, this movie was just kind of like all over the place a little bit, and it felt it felt the two and a half like I mean, it wasn't two and a half hours, but two hours and like ten minutes. It felt was it at this, times. Was this that long? Oh, yeah, yeah one hundred twenty-six minutes, bro. And it it goes deep into the credits because it shows you the real footage, and so you're like, yeah. You're like, oh, I want to watch this to compare and stuff like that. Um, it was weird though. There was like random like uh, actors that you're like, oh yeah, I recognize you. Like the the kid from Me and Myself and Irene and uh, Old School, the little fat dude that was going to mm -hmm. be um, Big Albert, Fat yeah. Albert, before yes. Keenan Thompson took it over. Which I think they should have kept with the original casting. I don't know what happened, but no, um, you know, uh, Bill Cosby had to tell Keenan, you know, how much this was going to make his career. <laughs> um exhibit talking about didn't Jesus say was such a crazy like that yes. was so nuts. <laughs> he's like he's like now I'm not you know I I'm just paraphrasing I ain't quoting but didn't G Jesus say in Luke chapter 4 <laughs> verse 5 that I was like oh god yeah. let's like, not I didn't he know be you judge and be judged he's like that's the book of Luke he's like that's right and you know what X to the Z, <laughs> <laughs> and then he put an apple box out, and then the then the crackles coming from Mount Caucasus. <laughs> yeah, like, they didn't yeah. say where I'm from. <laughs> He's like, I didn't know you were religious. I'm not, but you know, we need all the help we could get. I'm just like, nah, fool. You just quoted the Bible word for Yo, word. <laughs> I fucked around and tried to listen to an exhibit album on my way to to work, like at seven in the morning. That was a bad idea. That nigga's way too aggressive. He's like a he's like DMX light. <laughs> he just he is so angry, but he's like also smiling too and shit. Now Yo, listen okay. to DMX and there will be X at like eight in the morning is wild, dude. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that's that's oh, a crazy yeah. morning you're having. No, there there's a song on um I forgot which exhibit album is it, uh Time is Steady Wasting. Man, that song that, that used to hit me. It, I think it's uh Nate Dogg is singing the hook. Time mm. steady wasting. Steady yeah. wasting. Oh yeah, yeah I know that song. Yeah. That's a great song. Yeah, man. I mean, exhibit with aftermath like artists and stuff. He he had like he had some good features on like uh, I think he had one or two on two thousand one. Um, 
on his albums, they're, they weren't terrible. It's just like he never really could carry a full album, but his features would be pretty solid, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, you know what? I, I can't remember, like, any real features that I'm just, like, that are jumping out to me that the exhibit was in. Uh, were, he did I, a Limp Biscuit song, Get Your Groove On. That was He had a pretty good verse on that. Um, What's the Difference, I think, on 2001. He's on that. When he's on a Dre beat, he can he can do pretty well. I mean, who can't do well on a Dre beat at that True. time? True. I feel like I could even rap on a Dre beat. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I did laugh really hard. Like it was I, it was like funny, but also like just went on too long when the, the kid didn't have the cup. And he's like, I broke my biscuits, man. <laughs> like, oh my biscuits. Oh my biscuits. And then all the kids, all the other players were like. I gotta go get a cup. Like, yeah, no one was playing with a cup. <laughs> yeah, cups are for pussies. <laughs> and exhibit took so much. So, yeah, he was, so he was, much joy. He's like, ha, 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 cups are for pussies, huh? <laughs> you know, you know. At times, exhibit's character reminded me of Bernie Mac from that Pride movie with Terrence Howard, which is like this is a little bit too over the top. as like the side guy. Wait, from which 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 the movie, movie about the black swimmers? You mean oh, we no. got put on the list? Okay. Pride. With Terrence Howard. That movie is nuts. Um, it's an important story, but it's nuts. Uh, Fair. But yeah, like I, I wrote down too. I was like, man, cups are uncomfortable though. So I get it. Especially yeah, like are. for that facility, you know, they didn't have the good ones too. They had like the Oh, no, 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 no. They, they, they spent good money, you know, on, on what they need and what they need to get. It's just, you know, they, they just didn't wear them because they were just like, I don't need no, I don't need no cup. Who's going to hit me in my balls? A helmet, he had that will. one, uh, he had the one nigga who thought he was Jason Derulo. It was like, oh, you know, my dick is so big. I can't fit it in this cup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then that's when The Rock was like, you do math, right? <laughs> like, it was such a weird segue. Yeah, I like, that was a weird. That was a segue. Even though I did have a banana cup. You know, the banana cup is the one that kind of, that was like a little bit right? longer. And yeah. dip down, you know, it, it covers your berries. It covers your mm-hmm. berries very yeah. well. Yeah. I wanted extra coverage for my berries. How many times gonna say berries? <laughs> <laughs> Not just your twig, baby, but your berries too. I never, um, yeah. When I did sports, I never, fortunately, got hit in the nuts, but I definitely saw kids that got fucked up, mm-hmm. real bad. I got like, purposely need in the nuts. Ugh. I in a fight, this kid need me directly in the nuts, and th- and you know the thing is when you get hit in the nuts, it doesn't hit you right away. Because yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're in the delayed. heat of battle, and all of a sudden, like I get the kid in this, I'm just like, I was like, oh my, oh god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like sports wise, I never been hit in the nuts, but like you know, I talked about my guy kids. So my my godson Isaiah, when he was really young, he would sleep in the bed with me and Tati, right? Mm. And <laughs> dude, I mean, it's a kid, so I'm sure you've had this with your sons. You, you're just like in the middle of the night, and a kid swings over, and he just he fucking his heel just up down on my nuts. Yeah. Yeah, like a fucking sledgehammer. I, was, <laughs> I screamed to high heaven, bro. Brandon, I get kicked in the nuts so many times with my kids. I'm immune to it. <laughs> you kick me in the nuts. It's like, ha, ah, I've been kicked in the nuts by a toddler at four in the morning. You think that's going to hurt me? <laughs> just like in Not general, because they're sleeping with you and stuff. No, because, yeah, because they're sleeping with us. And they, yeah, just, yeah. they just come and knock me in the nuts in the middle yeah, of the yeah. night. We'll wake up. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to that. Yep, not fun. Not fun. <laughs> you just say wake up, like, <laughs> I can feel it in my throat. <laughs> Brandon, are you okay? Just crying in my sleep. I'm just crying in my sleep. Um, I, I, I know that like people who work at these juvenile centers and even in prisons and stuff, they have to read the letters that go out. And shit. Yeah. But yo, The Rock just sitting there reading those sad ass letters, like, baby, please write me back. <laughs> and is he legally allowed to bring that shit up though when people visit? What do you mean? Like when he brought up the fact that Journey hadn't uh, responded to her boyfriend's letters in front of her dad, I'm like, is that legal for you, you to be you, able to bring that up? No, I mean, you no, don't, right? You, you don't, ha- I mean, you lose a lot of your rights when you go to prison. You know, rights okay. to privacy and things like that, okay. because they got to make sure that you're not writing. So like, hey, bring in the drugs, you know, you know, around here. Well, you they know, wrap or, that shit up real quick. I mean, yeah. yeah, kill this person for me. They can't. So they do. They have full rights to go through your stuff. But at the same time, he was going there trying to help him. Yeah. I mean, I was just like, I don't know if this is like 
You know, I don't know if this is a kind of violation of privacy, but you're right. Like, you know, at this point, especially that kid, he killed somebody. So, yeah, I mean, but well, you know he what? had attempted at murder. Point. He had attempted murder and he actually murdered somebody. Because remember, he almost shot the dude who was the cousin uh, yeah, of the guy yeah, who killed I, his friend. Yeah. So this, this is the thing. So Paula was watching this with me and she goes, uh, she goes, why is like, why is he even going to jail? And it's like, well, Paula is like, you know, it's like because he, he he they claim that it was self defense because you know tech, the, the guy was beating his mother and beating them up. I'm like, yes, I said, but he has an illegal gun, and then mm-hmm. you don't know what's on that gun. You oh, know what yeah, other the bodies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What other crimes are on that gun? So they could they could send him down for anything. And I'm pretty sure he wouldn't snitch on who sent who gave him the gun uh, to use. So she's just like she's like she's like I don't know. I would just claim that the gun was his. No, the guy, the, the guy who got yeah. killed. Who was the and, character on the wire that took all the bodies for Avon? You know who I'm talking about, right? Because he was already going down for murder. He's like, they're like, oh, did you do this murder? He's like, yeah, I did that one too. Because like his kid was gonna be like taken yeah, yeah. care of yeah. by Avon. Fuck, that was such a funny scene. He's like, yeah, I did that too. Who was he? Yeah, got? yeah, <laughs> well, like, I mean, did that too. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> I mean, and that's so, so Paul's like, you know, I'll uh, like I, you know, we would if if that were me and, you know, and, you know, I, I was I was with somebody who was who was beating me up and, you know, it was a low life piece of shit beating me up. And then my son shot him. I would just lie and said that, you know, the gun was his and, you mm-hmm. know, and, and everything. And he was defending me. I was like. Yeah, Paul, because that's because you're a good mom. <laughs> like, yeah. like a lot of these people in these situations, you know. Well, you know, also, he was probably the, the he was probably the money maker, right? He yeah. was probably the one that kept them financially. And so the mom's not thinking like the safety of my kids. She's thinking, how am I going to make it through next month? You know? What yeah, I mean? but I mean, she's also being, you know, she's a battered woman. Oh, there, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many there's, things. There's so many things. That, and that's the thing that's so hard about the work that like people who run facilities like this do. Um, that do it the right way for the right reasons and trying to get back because it's man, you're going to get so many things. You're going to get environment. Yeah. You're going to get family. You're going to get people that are being raised or not being raised by folks that weren't raised themselves. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, let's be honest. The reason why all of us are here are just because our parents fought. They may not even been together. Mm-hmm. They just fought. It could have been one night and then life happens. Yep. Right. Bing, and so bang, you boom, have, boom. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, you have that, you have obviously like systematic racism, you have poverty, you have drug use, because I don't know, man, I've never wanted to try crack, but crack must be good as fuck for the things that people have done for crack. You know what I mean? Like, think about how good <laughs> Jay, Justin, <laughs> Justin. No, 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 go here, go, Justin, go with me here. <laughs> you and I've had some, we've had some pretty good weed at times. Mm-hmm. Think about like, I, cause I've heard like, I mean, I don't, I don't know any personal crackheads, but what I've seen documentaries, people describe crack and heroin as like, think about the biggest orgasm you've ever had times 10. Yeah, but I'm not willing to risk <laughs> my long-term health to feel that. You know what I mean? Like For a nut though, Brandon, for a good nut. For the for best ten, nut in for all. For times 10 nut. Well, that's the thing Ooh, though. Doggy. I, Brandon, are we selling crack use to, to our audience? <laughs> well, for me, what guys, always get yourself me? some crack. <laughs> no, no. We're, we're, uh, that's a joke, guys. Don't start doing crack yes. because medium popcorn said so. Do crack because Brandon Collins said so. <laughs> no, I did not. No, I did not. Um the reason why I like, I brought up the documentaries though is because the documentaries I've seen have also done a good job of um, and re- reiterating though, those addicts that said that, that described their drug use that way, also said that they spent the rest of their time chasing that first high. So yeah, you yeah. never beat the first high. And so for yeah. me, I was like, oh, okay, then I would never go for that. Then if you're not going to ever feel that consistently, then fuck that. Yeah. Um, you you just like, reminds listen. me of the scene of Bob Sagan half baked. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't suck dick for, uh, for weed. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Even not surprised by how many people still get bad weed these days. It's especially in New York. I'm like, bro, it's it's legal now. It's uh, there's some good stuff out there. Well, yeah. Well, listen, the the way things are going now with the with the 
with the lackadaisical use of fentanyl on everything, you oh, might yeah. as well. You're better off just going to a dispensary or something like that. Oh, don't yeah, that's take, why. I, yeah. Don't risk the streets. Don't risk the streets. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I just go to the dispensary. I just get the edibles. That's why I get edibles, too. I don't I don't trust yeah. smoking stuff. That's not if I don't see it from start to finish. Like, I don't want to have any part of it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. niggas apparently just sneaking that stuff into anything. Yeah. This is like, well, if I give them this extra high, they're gonna come back to me. It's just like, up oh, green too much. Bye bye. Yep. If they get, if, yeah, exactly. Because apparently, it doesn't take that much to overdose on fentanyl. Not at all. Not at all. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, so uh, green on gang. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna <laughs> say I, I wrote down gang culture is wild. Um, I don't know what I was trying to accomplish by that. Um, oh, I did write down family day must suck for these kids. Yo, that white boy, he he was so sad. He was like, hey, man, you want to be a receiver for me now? He's like, so I catch the ball? <laughs> it was like, yeah. A, a <laughs> white like, receiver, sir? <laughs> Last one of me is going to be Jason Seahorn, and then it'll be a long time before the Patriots bring white receivers back. Even though I got to say it was great casting on whoever they casted for his mom because she really looked like she was a dirt bag. <laughs> she really looked she really looked like like you know she would put him um she would put him in the room and sit him down in front of a Nintendo and she'd be sucking dick in the other room for fucking coupons, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely had some Stouffer's dinners for, you know, the TV tables and shit. Dinner. Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know the stofas, the, yeah, the microwave dinner. dinners. Yo, she he's lucky if he got a pop tart to ration throughout the day. <laughs> Come on now. She looked like she looked she didn't look like a full on crackhead, but she looked crack adjacent. Yeah, I mean but, no, but, but but in yeah. all actuality, it was pretty good casting because even when she came to the game and she's like, he's like, Danny, Danny. I'm just like, I've seen that mom before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, though, uh and, and I, like more like you no know, the white trash mom. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. those too. I've seen yeah. all the trash moms. Mm-hmm. Every race got trashy people. No, hundred yeah, percent. But like, yeah. I, I, in, I feel like the white trash mom is is very, um, is very specific. Very specific. Oh yeah. They, I mean, white they, trash they mom. Smell they... of marble reds. <laughs> and smell of marble cheap, reds and cheap liquor. And if there's a black, uh, is there, there's a black male around, they definitely flirting. Or trying oh to yeah, 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 yeah. They're trying to catch the. They're trying to get that other fix as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, they're they're way too, they're way too thin. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, where are we at now? <laughs> I don't know, man. This movie because the movie it's weird because the movie is so long, but at the end of the day, not I don't want to say not much happens, but it's a lot of like redundant stuff. It's like kids struggle. The Rock tries to push through his his frustration. Kids struggle. The Rock pushes through his frustration, tries to give an inspirational speech. Doesn't right, really hit. I mean, at the end, when they're like in the halftime, and the exhibit's like, we got to go get them ready. He's like, they're ready. You're ready. And I was like, are they, dig? Like, you didn't do anything. <laughs> well, but that's what he's saying. It's just like, he's like, they're at the point where they're, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're because they so become a team. That was so Hollywoodified. With the kids, like, you know what, guys, we can do this because we came together. It doesn't matter what gang we're affiliated with, what race we are. We can do this together. We can win this game. That means nothing statistically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of them did go on to have careers, um, but unfortunately, this program actually was shut down after. Uh, Despite 20 years of success, according to UB's research, uh, Camp Kilpatrick, the stellar uh, football program featuring the film, was sidelined in 2014, pending the outcome of a study on the long-term benefits thereof, despite helping to send multiple former Mustang players to college. Yeah, well, I mean, money talks, baby. In 2014, two years later, you know they definitely didn't bring that shit back. Yeah. Mm-mm. Um, also, apparently, the real coaches are in the scene where... Uh, they're pitching the athletic board. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, cool. The, the real coaches were there. Um, 
During a practice scene, Dwayne Johnson could be seen paying tribute to his college career by wearing the number 94, the same number he wore during his time with the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, he was um, uh, Warren Sapp's backup. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he they touched the- on that in the show, I think. Young Rock, I think they touched on yeah. that. He uh, played in the Canadian Football League, and then, you know, he said, fuck this, and he went into wrestling, went to the family business. Yeah, he's he's had an interesting career, man. Yeah, well, I mean, but you know what? It, it's also that the fact is, you know, not, I'm not saying it was easy for him, uh, but, like, you know, his dad, you know, was, you know, uh, a pretty well-respected wrestler. You know, he comes from yeah, a wrestling Yeah, but he struggled, family. though. Who's he that? struggled. Rocky, he struggled, man. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, because you know, part of the yeah. Soul Patrol with uh, Teddy you, Atlas, did, that Teddy you, Atlas, yeah, um, uh, Tony Atlas. Did you ever watch Young Rock? No. The actor that they got to play his dad is really good. There's a mm. there's a really like heartbreaking scene where I think he gets passed over for some match, and just like the you know how hard he's working, how just and the they had to they turn to his kid and like it's that disappointment is just man, that's a rough. That's a rough industry. Listen, man, I, I think we all hope that you can be, you know, by the time you have kids, you, ha- you know, you have all your shit together and you're where you want to be. And, you know, you're just like, oh, my my kid can be proud of it was like, but that that's not that's not it for everybody. Yeah. People, you know, you have kids and you're still and you're still chasing a dream or chasing something, whatever. And you're, and you're struggling. But, you know, that's yeah, that's that's tough, man. That's like that's real shit. Dollar in a dream, y'all. And that's why you should sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash medium popcorn. Because mm-hmm. we need the dollars to fund these dreams. Yes, sir. We're yes, going sir. to Texas, South by Southwest. We need your money. $2, $5, $10, $15, is everything helps. Everything's out there. You just want to just donate. You could donate, too. You could mm-hmm. do that. Come yeah, on, go man. to our website, mediumpopcorn.com. The donate button's on the top right. I ain't lying. Hit that donate button. Mm-hmm. Donate to us. Uh, at the end, when we, we talked about the white receiver, dude, the rock tells him when he's about to put him in for the last play on some mighty duck shit. And the white dude's like, what do I do? He's like, catch the ball. And I wrote down if that, if we were that easy, everyone would be a pro football player. What are we doing? Well, no, I mean, because the kid dropped <laughs> multiple yeah. passes, you know, he'd be dropping this shit. I mean, you know, but part of uh football is just having the confidence you know, to get out yeah. there and, and just like, I mean, it could be scary. No, no, it no, be it's scary, especially scary. if you hit hard the wrong way. If you get hard, hit hard in general, that shit can rattle you. I mean, look at the kid uh, junior, you know, you, you know, slip disc, mm. you know, just in uh, practice taking yeah. a hit. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. The kid junior who like worked his ass off to get on a team. He's like, can I be on a team? The Rock's like, no, <laughs> immediately. Well, like, well, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't think that you met uh, this guy. Uh, 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 around the time we started hanging out, this dude Taylor, who, um, who, you know, I, I'm friends with, he was, uh, un- he was, uh, went undrafted into the NFL. He was on the Colts, so he was taking, you know, catching passes from Peyton Manning, and came over the middle. And this is in training camp. Caught a pass, shattered his collarbone. That was done. His NFL career was over. You know what I'm saying? All that work and it, and it's done right there. It's yeah. like one hit and that's and and that and that could be completely it for you. That's a wrap. Yeah. And and that's what like twenty, no, no, I mean, uh, however many years of work that you've put into you know this thing to get to this one place, and you've just got to taste that dream and it gets snatched away from you, you know, in a second. Like that's like that's how fucked up you know the you know the game of football is and life. Yeah, you know, so, bro, <laughs> like, like it, it's I, it's so rough. It's so rough. I used to tell myself I take life one quarter of the time. I'm just, I'm just trying. <laughs> I did write down if the Rock were a white man, I would not have liked the way he was saying "boy." Come here, boy. <laughs> I was like, I did not like that. That reminded me very. Uh, it was very Huck Finn in the nineties. <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh, nigga, Jim. <laughs> God damn it, Justin. Stop saying the whole thing. I said, hey. Oh, thank God. <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> I can never tell. You got the big lips. I can't tell what you're saying at the time. You're sitting here reading my lips. Use your ears, fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I don't, I don't know, man. Football is a hell of a hell of a sport. Like I used to be told, um, I should have, I should have played football just to tackle niggas. Cause, uh, me and my friends, we used to practice, play practice football. And mm-hmm. apparently I could tackle real hard. I think that's the way I got my anger out. <laughs> which was just by tackling niggas real hard. I remember this kid Tyrone. This nigga's from Detroit. I tackled him one time. He was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he was like, I got hit by a car. It was like, you know, I'm not, the, yeah. And because, you know, I'm not the biggest person. So I think it's also surprising that I could hit that hard. But then I was well, like, you have a low center of gravity. You'd mm, be able to get under them and, and, uh, you know, yeah. I even, guess, yeah, because I was, I was going with my, my, my legs, pushing with my legs. So that's where a lot of my force came from. But I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Did you, you play football for a little bit, right? Yeah, I played football. I just, I, I don't know. My grandfather used to play football because he's, you know, he's a big dude. He's a big guy. Um, but apparently, he was like a, like they did like you know little like uh, community teams and shit like that. But mm-hmm. my daughter, yo, she used to, my daughter was so evil. She she would be like tell these stories, and if it caused if it resulted in someone else in pain, she would just giggle and stuff. She talked about how my papa and his community football team. I guess they played the local prison team. Oh boy, it was like the they Yomaka played the Sierra. Grenadine game. <laughs> yo, they got. She said they got fucked up. <laughs> Of course. She was like, they were bleeding. They were bruised. Some had broken limbs. She was like, they they went to town on those boys. She just started cackling. And I was like, well, that was crazy. Listen, man, from a different era. From a different era. It would have been wild if she was like, that's and after that, your papa started drinking. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I, you know, uh, playing football, um, yeah. I I went to defense. I was just like, yeah, I think I'm better off, like, you know, just hitting people. Yeah. But I also realized that, like, I didn't, I wasn't motivated and cared enough. You know what I'm saying? If I was pissed off at something, oh, then I'd hit people. Yeah. And, you know, like, football would have been an avenue for me to take out my anger, you know, on whatever's going on in my life where on on people. But like, also, that's not a good place to be. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So you know, but even so, like you know, when I was doing MMA, like at some point, it was kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> like, do I really need to be doing this? Because yeah. it, it it puts you it puts your mind in a in a certain place, which which wasn't it, it wasn't it wasn't conducive uh, uh, for me. I mean, it also wears down your body incredibly quick. That's the thing about athletes that you don't learn about. Like, and I don't think a lot of people consider it as a fan. Like, you know, like you yeah. fans are always like ultra critical because you're not the ones playing the sport and shit. But it's like, not only do I have to like, if I'm a professional athlete, not only do I have to play it to the best of my ability, but I also know that my clock is running out quickly. Yeah. And that's why you got to cash out. You gotta catch, if you I'm gotta not an all-star money. player, if I'm not a big fucking name, I got to get the most out of this shit as I can. And if I get any kind of injury or like if I make a wrong turn, if I make a wrong decision, that could be my ass. That could be Brandon, the end of my career. Brandon, like that's why, um, you know, I, I had a tryout for the ultimate fighter and like, you know, I dislocated my elbow. Didn't get a chance to go. I didn't have no fucking insurance. It was like two days before I was supposed to leave. And then I was just it's thinking about it. I'm it's just like, I have a fucking college degree. Why yeah. the fuck am I fighting in a fucking cage? For what? Pennies to the dollar. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Why not go on stage and do nothing <laughs> and tell jokes for nothing? But, you know, it, it, it didn't make sense, you know, what I was putting my body oh, through, yeah. Yeah, you know, for, sure. uh, for that. You know, it's... And that's the thing is, like, <clears throat> there, are so, there are certain sports, you know, which lend themselves uh to people who don't have many other options you know what i'm saying and and and, not, and and that's not a diss on you know people who you know who are fighters or, or or play you know certain kinds of you know rough sports it's just those people excel easier at those sports because they are playing they 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 are they are, they're under a completely different motivation life yeah. is motivating them that like this may be their last opportunity and they are going to cash out. They're all they're going they're, they're going to go all the way in. Like you can't be have one foot in if if you know you're playing football or if you're stepping into a fucking cage, you know, to kick somebody in the face or somebody trying to kick you in the face. Yeah. You know? 
you know, it, it's just, it's, it's just a, if it's a different uh, mindset, you know, which, and that's why I love it. And that's why I love people who are able to, who are able to do that shit and you got to respect them. And when people don't want to pay them, that's why I get pissed off for them. I'm like, that guy deserves all the fucking money. I'm exactly. sorry. I don't get off my soapbox. No, I get, I get it, man. Athletes are, there needs to be more mutual respect all around in in society for whatever you choose to do with your life as long as it's not it's just it's just wild man it's it's weird how like critical people can be you know and what? they don't understand you know the fucking sacrifice and pain and turmoil you go through to, to get that shit done well you know what and just like you said mutual respect because we live in a country where people the first when when you when they meet somebody like, oh what do you do i'm a teacher oh yeah you got summers off how how easy must, must it be but they're dealing with your crazy fucking disrespectful ass kids all day you know and to take it back to gridiron gang you work at a juvenile detention center you work at a a, a prison and people just think it's like oh you have this nice cushy government job it's just like yeah but i'm dealing with people who are not do who are not well and they're in the worst possible place that nobody wants to end up in life. And I'm dealing with all the blowback yeah. from it. And it's imminent danger in my life. It's oh, like, yeah. that's why you need to respect people. It's like, bro, I live every day like it's blood in, blood out. Like, this ain't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Adna insurance. They gave me the fucking government shit. It ain't good. <laughs> I'm I'm clocking out. And all I hear is, give me that cho-cho. <laughs> my, my fucking... My fucking copay is two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. man, they like it, 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 it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, we did get two more um, pieces of trivia from our producer Yuvia. The first of which is with this film, Sony became the first studio to release ten films that opened at number one at the box office in a single year. The previous record was nine, set by also set by Sony in two thousand three, with the release of Something's Got to Give, um, and then. Nicholas Cage, Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone all expressed interest in playing Sean Porter before the role went to Dwayne Johnson, which means that they had a small budget. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, they had a budget of 30 million at this time. But imagine either one of those three niggas playing this role. <laughs> Nicholas Cage would have been insane talking to a bunch of black kids from the from gangs and shit. <laughs> hey, don't you want to turn your life around? That sounds like Gary Busey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was weird. That was really weird. If Gary Busey could have done this. That would have been fucking nuts. Wow. Wow, you're such a great runner. <laughs> so Buster Stallone would have been weird because the kids would have been like, Nick, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> hey, you know, I got the black I fought a black guy once. <laughs> <laughs> you talk hey, about yo, Willie. Hey, yo, Willie, come here. I just want to talk to you. I think you could be a great football player. You know? What do you? I mean, what do you want to do with your life? You know, your cousin's dead. I'm dead. You know, we're all dead. We're gonna die one day in our life. I don't want you to die like your cousin died on the streets. So I want you to be on the football team, right? <laughs> that would what? be the model. Yeah, when that kid got shot in the field, like if Nicholas Cage was in this role, he would have been like, "No, no, <laughs> black boy." <laughs> Yo, I just imagine it's like it's imagine Sylvester Stallone sitting in that room with like the board, <laughs> sitting around with the board is like, "Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, I know the kid got shot in the field, but at the same time, look, Willie Weathers, Willie Weathers, they didn't took completely <laughs> different sets." And he went out there and he saved that kid. He saved that kid from being shot and killed in the streets. And the streets didn't do that to him. He got taught that by football, you know? So I think, you know, you got to get these kids cans and give it, you know, get this program back up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that would be the worst. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh. Well, folks, uh, that's our uh, mini review on Gridiron <laughs> Gang. Uh, just in time for the Super Bowl. Justin mm -hmm. Tapper Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, if folks are like, what the hell, guys? It's Black History Month. Why are you doing a football movie? The way the Rod Johnson's half black. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. And, and it's it in this. And it's a majority black cast. Yes, indeed. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. About system, systemic issues that are not resolved with this movie. Nope, nope, nope. 
but it's so still if, going if on. Are, yep, very in fact, they're even worse, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Brandon, let's let, let's do this. Let's rate this film. Yeah, break down uh, the rating system, baby. Stop calling me baby. So, guys, you know how we do this. We rate movies back to popcorn, small, medium, large, and the XL for the exceptional. If a movie doesn't deserve any popcorn, we throw it into the dog shit pile. We pile piles and piles of dog shit on top of it. Brandon, we sat down and watched the 2006 film Gridiron Gang. Starring Dwayne the Rock Giants, uh, Johnson uh, exhibit. <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Giants. <laughs> yeah, Giants. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Dwayne the Rock Johnson exhibit Kevin Dunn and Leon Rippey. What say you, sir? And Journey Smollett. Oh, yes, and Journey. Oh, Journey. Mm, yeah, Journey, Journey. Um, let's get some medium. It's actually higher than I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't terrible. It's It's very like by the beat, like. I know what's going to happen. Very predictable. And it does get redundant at times. I think if they cut maybe 25 minutes, it could have been a really good sports movie. Mm. Um, but it's, it's fine. It like it, you know, it was an easy way to pass the time except for the harrowing first 15 minutes. We were just like, Jesus but Christ, it, but it's necessary. It okay. is, but I kind of wish it had kept that intensity. I think that at times mm. it got a little bit too light hearted and it got a little bit too formulaic, like generic sports inspiring story versus keeping that in, that intensity like i think um what was the movie with ben affleck the way back i think that's a good example of a movie that is formulaic to a degree but mm. keeps like that same like intense like down you know underdog like man these people are going through it story Whereas this is like ebbs and flows of like inspiration, then like setbacks, inspiration, then setbacks. And then you got exhibit just smiling the whole time, which is <laughs> like his presence somehow just made me smile because he's so fucking random. It kind of worked for me. Yeah, it, it kind of worked. Um, Man, these kids, these kids are living a terrible life. I think I need to pimp one of their rides. <laughs> hey, don't knock him, man. He, he made it happen. He made it no, work. No, no, listen. Listen, he he made his money. That's that's what really matters. I'm just glad he stopped. <laughs> I'm just glad he stopped that. That's all. Good. 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 Justin, what's your rating? Uh yeah, I'm gonna give it a medium as well. Um uh I, I do like like you said, it is a longer movie, but at the same time, it didn't feel that long, which yeah. is actually a pretty good uh thing. Uh, but like you said, I would I would cut off some time to make it a little tighter um, and uh, would, you know, it, I, I think it would add a little. Um, it, I mean, th there were times where the, where the film felt uh, some things uh, dragged out a little bit, not too much. It, you know, it just felt like, we, like it was almost like they were extending for time. But if they cut a little bit more, made it a little bit tighter, it would kept up, like you were saying, some of that intensity and uh, kind of you know, just gave us a, a, a overall tighter film. Um, but like, I, I think that, you know, for a young rock, no uh, pun intended, um, uh, he did a really good job with this. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the child, the kid actors uh, the, or the teenagers or at, especially in this time, the young yeah, I men. Don't know if they, yeah, I don't know if they were teenagers. Bro. Yeah. The, the young men. Uh, I, I think that they actually did a, a, a pretty decent job, you know, uh, with these characters as well. So all in all, I would say it's a pretty solid film, you know, uh, for, you know, what, you know, because I think the expectation for this was really low. Yes, and then, I would say that. Yeah, yeah for sure. But cause I remember even watching it, you know, when I you know, watched it as a kid, I was just like, oh, this is actually, you know, pretty decent. Yeah. But I, and I think and, it actually aged pretty well as well. That may, yeah, I, I I think so, too. It still held up from being from 2006. Yeah. Um, and our producer, UV in the chat did say this movie did help reform some center. So that's good. I mean, it probably helped them, like, recalibrate their missions and intention, hopefully. Yeah. But, um. Folks, that's our uh, review on Gridiron Gang. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed this. This is also a Patreon request. So remember, if you sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash mini popcorn, you're able to be part of uh, the chats and Discord, all these things. Suggest movies like Gridiron Gang um, for us to review. And uh, again, it's available. We have various tiers, $2, $5, $10, and $15 tiers. All of it nice helps the show. Um, and y'all know you can follow me at Frodo underscore Blackens on Instagram and threads. You can follow the show at Medium P Podcast on all social media platforms. And you can go to youtube.com slash Medium P Podcast. Press that subscribe button to get alert about all future videos where you can see our ugly mugs as well as celebrity interviews that we do. And Justin, if people want to follow you, how can they do so, sir? 
Guys, you can follow me. Check me out at J Brown did it on the socials. But of course, you and all of your friends can go over to patreon.com slash media popcorn. Two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollar packages. Tell uh, your that's friends. It, that's where we need you guys. You know, help us uh, you know, in, in our uh trek down uh to Austin for South by Southwest. You know, because we could help use your help on there. And again, that's patreon.com slash medium popcorn. That's right. It or ain't our safe website where I'm you from. can don't what? I'm trying to wrap exhibit. It ain't safe where I'm from. Nigga star beef ain't know the outcome. Are are you reading the lyrics off your computer right now, Brandon? No, no, I just went off the dome. Yeah, yeah. You're reading the lyrics. I, I promise. I'm not... <laughs> you didn't say nothing the whole time about these glasses. <laughs> I know. I I didn't want to give you the grasp. Gotcha. The what? You okay? Oh boy, everybody. Justin getting old. It's okay. No. Uh, yeah, it, you're not gonna understand the story. It's like an inside joke with me and some of my college friends. And I almost said it to you. I was just like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna come off like I'm crazy. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's part of the course. It's okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll talk to y'all soon. Yeah. And have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Hopefully, the commercials end. Aren't that bad this year. <laughs> hut, hut. <laughs>